Once the pride of American innovation, Intel built the chips that powered the world, from personal computers to supercomputers, from Wall Street to Silicon Valley. But today, that legacy is cracking. Delays, mismanagement, and fierce competition have turned a global powerhouse into a struggling survivor. As NVIDIA leads the AI revolution and China rises with Huawei and SMIC, Intel's dominance has faded into memory. What happened to America's greatest tech empire? In this video, we uncover how Intel, once the engine of the digital age, fell behind, and why its collapse could redefine the future of US technology itself. For more than five decades, Intel was the beating heart of modern technology. Founded in 1968 by Robert Noyce and Gordon Moore, the company didn't just make processors, it built the very foundation of the digital world. Every major innovation in computing, from the personal computer revolution to the birth of the internet, had Intel inside. By the late 1990s, Intel was a household name. Its iconic jingle, Intel Inside, became a global symbol of reliability and performance. The company's chips powered everything. Dell, HP, IBM, and even Apple relied on Intel's unmatched engineering. Its dominance seemed eternal, and Wall Street believed Intel was too big to fail. But somewhere between innovation and arrogance, Intel lost its way. The warning signs appeared in the early 2000s, when competitors like TSMC began catching up in manufacturing efficiency. While Intel was still producing 14 nanometer chips, TSMC was already moving towards 7 nanometer designs. Yet Intel's leadership ignored the storm, confident that its legacy and resources would protect it. Then came the smartphone revolution, and Intel missed it completely. While Qualcomm and Apple built chips for the mobile era, Intel doubled down on desktop and server processors, dismissing mobile computing as a fad. That single mistake cost Intel the future. By the time Intel realized the world had changed, the industry had moved on. Its once flawless manufacturing pipeline was plagued by delays, technical failures, and leadership turnover. Products were postponed, contracts were lost, and rivals surged ahead. Fast forward to today, NVIDIA dominates AI, TSMC leads in manufacturing, and Huawei and SMIC are building a new tech empire in Asia. Intel, once the undisputed leader, is struggling to remain relevant in a world it helped create. But the real question isn't how Intel fell, it's whether it can rise again. The company is now pouring billions into new fabs in Arizona and Ohio, but time is running out. In the chip war of the 21st century, speed is everything, and Intel is late to its own race. If you're new here, hit subscribe. We break down the stories shaping the global tech and economic landscape every week. The fall of Intel is only one chapter in a much larger battle that's far from over. Behind the polished slogans and glossy keynote presentations, Intel's decline wasn't sudden. It was slow, internal, and entirely self-inflicted. The company that once thrived on risk and innovation became paralyzed by bureaucracy and fear of failure. In the early 2000s, Intel's culture began to shift. It grew massive, rich, and complacent. Instead of chasing bold ideas, it focused on protecting its existing markets, desktops, and servers, while ignoring the changing tides of technology? Engineers who once drove breakthroughs complained that upper management was obsessed with quarterly profits and shareholder appeasement rather than long-term vision. The cracks became visible when Intel stumbled on its 10 nanometer process, a project meant to keep the company ahead of TSMC and Samsung. What was supposed to launch in 2016 was delayed again and again, finally arriving years late, by which time competitors had already moved on. Intel's leadership kept promising investors that the fix was coming, but each new CEO inherited deeper problems than the last. Meanwhile, the company's rivals were rewriting the rules. AMD, long considered a minor player, made a dramatic comeback with its Ryzen and EPYC processors. Using TSMC's advanced manufacturing, AMD chips offered better performance at lower power consumption, a one-two punch that caught Intel off guard. For the first time in two decades, Intel's technological superiority was gone. 
Then came NVIDIA, which transformed the GPU, once seen as a graphics tool, into the foundation of artificial intelligence. As NVIDIA's market value exploded, Intel's shrank. The world had entered the AI era, and Intel wasn't leading it. By the late 2000s, tens, Intel had become a follower in an industry it once defined. Leadership turnover didn't help, with four CEOs in less than a decade, each bringing a new strategic vision that never fully materialized. The result? A once unified company fragmented into internal power struggles and missed opportunities. Engineers left for startups, innovation slowed, and morale plummeted. While the world rushed into the future of AI and mobile computing, Intel clung to the past, trying to protect its shrinking empire instead of building a new one. Intel's story is no longer just about technology. It's about what happens when success breeds complacency and when an empire forgets how to evolve. As Intel stumbled, its competitors moved with precision and purpose. The global semiconductor stage, once dominated by a single American titan, began to fracture. Each rival found Intel's weaknesses and exploited them with surgical accuracy. First came TSMC, the quiet powerhouse from Taiwan. While Intel clung to its integrated device model, designing and manufacturing its own chips, TSMC focused on pure manufacturing. It became the world's foundry, producing chips for Apple, AMD, NVIDIA, and eventually even Intel itself. By perfecting efficiency, scalability, and precision, TSMC set a new standard in chip fabrication. The result? Intel was no longer the most advanced manufacturer on Earth, and that psychological blow was devastating. Then there was AMD, Intel's longtime underdog. After years of trailing behind, AMD's decision to outsource production to TSMC proved genius. Freed from manufacturing headaches, AMD focused entirely on innovation. Its Ryzen and EPYC processors not only matched Intel's best, they beat them, offering superior performance and lower prices. For the first time in two decades, gamers, data centers, and enterprise clients began switching sides. Meanwhile, NVIDIA was rewriting the rules entirely. While Intel was still perfecting CPUs, NVIDIA saw the future in GPUs, processors designed not for logic, but for learning. That bet transformed NVIDIA from a graphics card company into an AI superpower. Today, its chips power everything from ChatGPT to autonomous vehicles. And Intel, once the king of silicon, is now a spectator. But the biggest shock came from the East. China, spurred by US sanctions, poured billions into homegrown innovation. Huawei's Kunpeng and Ascend processors and SMIC's advanced lithography breakthroughs proved that the country could no longer be dismissed as a low-end manufacturer. Within just a few years, Beijing went from being Intel's biggest customer to its most determined competitor. The once global supply chain that revolved around Intel has now splintered into two ecosystems, one led by the US and one by China. In that new world, Intel is neither leading nor defining, it's surviving. The fall of Intel wasn't just about missed deadlines or bad management, it was about losing the narrative, the sense that the future belonged to them. And once that perception is gone, even giants can crumble. After years of decline, Intel is fighting for survival and redemption. Determined to reclaim its legacy, the company has launched a massive turnaround plan, investing over $100 billion into new semiconductor fabs across Arizona, Ohio, and Europe. These facilities, backed by the U.S. CHIPS Act, are meant to rebuild America's chip independence and challenge the Asian manufacturing giants. Intel's new CEO, Pat Gelsinger, has become the face of this comeback mission. His message is bold. Intel will no longer chase the competition. It will lead again. Under his leadership, the company has opened its foundry business to other chip designers, hoping to compete directly with TSMC and Samsung. The plan is to transform Intel from a fading relic into the factory of the free world. But ambition alone can't erase a decade of mistakes. Building a semiconductor foundry is among the most complex engineering challenges on Earth. Intel's new plants won't be fully operational until 2026 or later. And in this industry, a year can feel like a lifetime. By the time Intel's facilities are ready, TSMC could already be producing two nanometer chips and China's SMIC may have quietly closed much of the gap. 
Meanwhile, Intel's product roadmap remains uncertain. Its attempts to enter the GPU and AI markets have struggled to gain traction, with NVIDIA and AMD maintaining overwhelming dominance. Even Intel's flagship server chips, once the backbone of global data centers, are losing market share to faster, more efficient alternatives. The US government is fully aware of what's at stake. Intel isn't just a company. It's a symbol of American technological supremacy. Washington's support is both financial and political, positioning Intel as a cornerstone of national security and supply chain resilience. But money can't buy innovation. It takes speed, risk-taking, and culture. The very qualities Intel lost during its years of complacency. Still, hope remains. Intel's vast experience, engineering talent, and deep partnerships give it a chance if it can rediscover its pioneering spirit. The question is not whether Intel can build new factories, but whether it can rebuild belief inside the company and across the world. Because in the chip war of the 21st century, only the bold survive. Intel's story is more than a corporate collapse. It's a mirror of America's struggle to stay ahead in a world that's changing faster than ever. Once the engine of the digital age, Intel now stands as a warning of what happens when innovation gives way to inertia and when giants forget how to take risks. The fall of Intel marks the end of an era, a time when the words made in America defined the cutting edge of technology. But it also signals the beginning of something new, a new race, a new balance of power, and perhaps a new kind of competition where ideas, not geography, decide who leads. Can Intel rise again? Possibly. But to do that, it must stop living in the shadow of its past and start building the future it once promised. Because in this new age of chips, AI, and global rivalries, there's no room for nostalgia, only evolution. If you found this video insightful, leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Because the story of the chip war is far from over, and we'll be here to break it down every step of the way.